are the agreement with them? Both. Okay. Hmm. Both. Because I don't have any problem with going through with the budget but with your assurance that you'll sit down and review these things you guys have discussed tonight. Yep. Um, I think it's ironic with these two things I've heard you talk about. It goes clear back to when the field started saying, what are we going to do about looking at uh, if, the, if the EMS budget fails again, what do we do about going to AMR? You know, ca <laughs> talk about causing troubles, but look at the foresight that we were, you know, he was just yeah. looking at what happens if. Yep. And I, here's it. We got kicked in the teeth for that, but it was a what if. It well, was, we kind of did, the process was a little bit screwed up. I don't think so, because if that word had got out prior to, it would have been leaked straight to Canvas immediately, so I don't have a problem with it. You can always look back and say, what if, but you had to take, you had to go to step one and two and three without revealing your plan. Other items on the 11 budget? Well, with regard to the Humane Society, um, I have to say I... In looking at future budgets or looking down the road, uh, we do have to focus on what our core elements are and what we owe the citizens in terms of deliverables. And um, frankly, the Humane Society comes quite a ways down that list when we look at what is our core function. And although I think it's a totally worthy endeavor, I, I've supported them financially and with time in the past as a citizen, and I'll continue to do that. And uh, frankly, I'm totally willing to start looking. I think it's going to take us working with them and finding a lot of pieces to that puzzle that we can all make that fit. Uh, because we told them last year when we appropriated the council so over, you know, uh, over <coughs> the, uh, we made an amendment to the budget to to give them $25,000 again, and with the understanding that that number was going to diminish substantially, and yet they all come back. If I have got to say that it almost makes me laugh that we get more comments on the Humane Society than we do on streets. streets fire trucks, water services, raising public rates. sewer, raising <laughs> rates. Oh, yeah, so we've it, 20 to 1 on it's, it's a level of passion that it these is. people all have for this endeavor, and it is tr a true community building experience. So I applaud them for everything they've done, but we've got to help them understand that it needs to be a community event, and if they had put as much energy into fundraising as they Our have community. into lobbying us, <laughs> Um, they would easily have that amount of money. They wouldn't give us the time of day. That's right. <laughs> but my comment to any of them that have had a discussion with me is, look how good you're going to feel when you are yep. independent. Absolutely. You don't have to worry about this. Mm -hmm. Look how much effort, like you said, how much effort they put into it here alone. Put that effort into something else and you feel good about yourself when you're done and you're self-supporting. Is there a... Do we have a master list of uh, dog owners or people who have applied for licenses? And is that considered public record? I mean, could they actually send letters uh, asking for s financial support to the, all those people, mm -hmm. dog owners? It's a marketing thing. They just have to, it's probably like putting a call trail on them. You know, you just gotta market it, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And we, and we know, yes, I think the short answer is, yes, we have our list of dog licenses that go back <laughs> however far they were ever put into a system where they're in files so, downstairs. So even uh, we don't if know if Fido is still alive. But however, if the people are still in that, in that home, they're still animal supporters if they have an animal likely. that has died or they've given away or something. Yep. You take the bait, Sean. You never even blinked. You just kept right on moving. <laughs> I missed it. Golf tournament. Oh, sorry. I did. I missed it completely. Any um, poker other items on Humane Society? Items on budget? Michael. I do have one item. I'm sorry that at this late hour we're introducing yet one more topic, but it's the last discussion potentially before we actually pass the budget. It has to do with the economic development. The uh, $55,000, which consists of $5,000 and $50,000. Um, is is that $50,000 number for the new 
uh, line item for that economic development um, council. Is that, um, how do we come up with that number? Um, it's a, well, the 55,000 is 5,000 to CRUDC. The 50,000 is one, it's 25 percent of what we have loosely projected a first year budget being or a startup budget being for a new entity. Um, I wouldn't say that at this point there's any rhyme or reason to it other than it was a number. Um, it also fell in line with the fact that um, the port was willing to go up to 100000 on their contribution and be a lead agency on the thing. Um, so for us to each come in at 50000 to get to the 25000 number made a, a logical connection there. But that being said, and I wasn't able to make the last meeting last week, um, did we? Did somebody take on the task of putting together a projected budget for the first? No, uh, we are uh, at the stage of where we're going to craft an interlocal agreement, where the port would be the uh, primary agency, and the cities of Camas and Washougal would uh, obtain economic development services from the port, who would then go out. With a, with a professional services agreement and we are finalizing the scope of services and the deliverables for the professional services that a contractor will provide to the port and then at, for the East County through an interlocal agreement with all of the communities. Uh, so the budget is uh, basically a port line item. We remit, Camus remits, port's got their line item and it's uh, professional services and maybe a little bit around our own marketing, advertising, maybe potentially around some facilities or some things like that. And one of the first deliverables of this contractor in working with the committee that will be created, the intergovernmental committee to oversee this, will be to um, basically create the entity, including its budget, bylaws and and all of that and then I think the idea would be that that contractor or another contractor would then work for the entity as opposed to the port gotcha. right but I think in terms of what's the budget um, not all of the 200 is to pay for uh, personnel services but the lion's share of it is you know uh, a contractor whether it's a sole proprietor a sole proprietor in partnership with a larger company, a larger company that provides the services or a couple partners or whatever it would be, um, there's, we need some of those funds to advertise for it. We need some of those funds uh, to produce materials uh, promoting the region. Uh, potentially to house it. Uh, potentially to house it. We've talked about our uh, vacant inspection building as possible initial temporary site. But I would say the lion's share of the 200, the exact number, I don't know, would be for, you know, people doing work on our behalf. And uh, I think, I don't know, the 200,000 number, you know, if you think about an entity and human resources, that's uh, one and a half to two people with a little bit of overhead. It's about what that pencils out to probably, depending upon you know, what a contractor would want to charge for their services. I, I just wanted to add one thing to that. The 